General Purpose Computing on Graphics Processing Units, Wikipedia Audio General Purpose Computing on Graphics Processing Units is the use of a graphics processing unit which typically handles computation only for computer graphics, to perform computation in applications traditionally handled by the central processing unit. The use of multiple video cards in one computer, or large numbers of graphics chips, further parallelizes the already parallel nature of graphics processing. In addition, even a single GPU-CPU framework provides advantages that multiple CPUs on their own do not offer due to the specialization in each chip. Essentially, a GPU pipeline is a kind of parallel processing between one or more GPUs and CPUs that analyzes data as if it were an image or other graphic form. While GPUs operate at lower frequencies, they typically have many times the number of cores. Thus, GPUs can process far more pictures and graphical data per second than a traditional CPU. Migrating data into graphical form and then using the GPU to scan and analyze it can create a large speedup. GPU pipelines were developed at the beginning of the 21st century for graphics processing. These pipelines were found to fit scientific computing needs well, and have since been developed in this direction. History General-purpose computing on GPUs only became practical and popular after about 2001, with the advent of both programmable shaders and floating-point support on graphics processors. Notably, Problems involving matrices and slash or vectors a euro especially two, three, or four-dimensional vectors a euro were easy to translate to a GPU, which acts with native speed and support on those types. The scientific computing community's experiments with the new hardware began with a matrix multiplication routine, one of the first common scientific programs to run faster on GPUs than CPUs was an implementation of LU factorization. These early efforts to use GPUs as general-purpose processors required reformulating computational problems in terms of graphics primitives, as supported by the two major APIs for graphics processors, OpenGL and DirectX. This cumbersome translation was obviated by the advent of general-purpose programming languages and APIs such as sh rapidmind Brook, and Accelerator. 8 bits per pixel a euro sometimes palette mode, where each value is an index in a table with the real color value specified in one of the other formats. Sometimes 3 bits for red, 3 bits for green, and 2 bits for blue, 16 bits per pixel a euro usually the bits are allocated as 5 bits for red, 6 bits for green, and 5 bits for blue, 24 bits per pixel a euro there are 8 bits for each of red, green, and blue, 32 bits per pixel a euro there are 8 bits for each of red, green, blue, and alpha. These were followed by NVIDIA's CUDA which allowed programmers to ignore the underlying graphical concepts in favor of more common high-performance computing concepts. Newer, hardware vendor-independent offerings include Microsoft's Direct Compute and Apple-Chronos Group's OpenCL. This means that modern GPU pipelines can leverage the speed of a GPU without requiring full and explicit conversion of the data to a graphical form. Any language that allows the code running on the CPU to pull a GPU shader for return values, can create a GPU framework. As of 2016, OpenCL is the dominant open general purpose GPU computing language, and is an open standard defined by the Kronos Group. OpenCL provides a cross platform a platform that additionally supports data parallel compute on CPUs.
OpenCL is actively supported on Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, and ARM platforms. The Kronos Group is currently involved in the development of SYCL, which has its implementations with Compute CPP and SYCL STL, the first being developed by CodePlay, and currently only supported in Linux operating systems. The second one, being hosted by Kronos Group on GitHub, and possible to be compiled for any modern operating system. The dominant proprietary framework is NVIDIA CUDA. NVIDIA launched CUDA in 2006, a software development kit and application programming interface that allows using the programming language C to code algorithms for execution on GeForce 8 series GPUs. Programming standards for parallel computing include OpenCL, OpenACC, and OpenHMPP. Mark Harris, the founder of GPGPU.org, coined the term GPU. Programmable processors A Euro Vertex, Primitive, Fragment and mainly compute pipelines allow programmer to perform kernel on streams of data. Rasterizer A Euro creates fragments and interpolates per vertex constants such as texture coordinates and color. Texture unit A Euro read only memory interface. Frame buffer A Euro write only memory interface. The Celerit SDK, created by Celerit, is designed to accelerate large existing C or C sharp code bases on GPUs with minimal effort. It provides a simplified programming model, automates parallelization, manages devices and memory, and compiles to CUDA binaries. Additionally, multi-core CPUs and other accelerators can be targeted from the same source code. OpenVIDIA was developed at University of Toronto during 2003-2005 in collaboration with NVIDIA. Dense arrays, sparse matrices A Euro static or dynamic, adaptive structures. Implementations AltiMesh hybridizer created by AltiMesh compiles common intermediate language to CUDA binaries. It supports generics and virtual functions. Debugging and profiling is integrated to Visual Studio and Insight. It's available as a Visual Studio extension on Visual Studio Marketplace. Microsoft introduced the Direct Compute GPU Computing API, released with the DirectX 11 API. Alia GPU created by Chuan Talia introduces native GPU computing capabilities for the Microsoft.NET language F# and C# Alia GPU also provides a simplified GPU programming model based on GPU parallel for and parallel aggregate using delegates and automatic memory management. MATLAB supports GPU acceleration using the Parallel Computing Toolbox and MATLAB Distributed Computing Server, and third-party packages like Jacket. GPU processing is also used to simulate Newtonian physics by physics engines, and commercial implementations include Havoc Physics, FX, and Physical X, both of which are typically used for computer and video games. Close to Metal, now called Stream, is AMD's GPU technology for ATI Radeon-based GPUs. C++ Accelerated Massive Parallelism is a library that accelerates execution of C++ code by exploiting the data parallel hardware on GPUs. Mobile Computers Hardware Support Due to a trend of increasing power of mobile GPUs, general-purpose programming became available also on the mobile devices running major mobile operating systems. Computer clusters or a variant of a parallel computing for highly calculation-intensive tasks, high-performance computing clusters, often termed supercomputers, 
including cluster technologies like message passing interface, and single system image, distributed computing, and Beowulf. Integer numbers Floating point numbers Vectorization GPU vs CPU Caches Google Android 4.2 enabled running render script code on the mobile device GPU. Apple introduced a proprietary Metal API for iOS applications, able to execute arbitrary code through Apple's GPU compute shaders. Computer video cards are produced by various vendors, such as NVIDIA, and AMD, and ATI. Cards from such vendors differ on implementing data format support, such as integer and floating point formats. Microsoft introduced a shader model standard, to help rank the various features of graphic cards into a simple shader model version number. PreDirect X9 video cards only supported palette or integer color types. Various formats are available, each containing a red element, a green element, and a blue element. Sometimes another alpha value is added, to be used for transparency. Common formats are Register file For early fixed function or limited programmability graphics this was sufficient because this is also the representation used in displays. This representation does have certain limitations, however. Given sufficient graphics processing power even graphics programmers would like to use better formats, such as floating point data formats, to obtain effects such as high dynamic range imaging. Many GPU applications require floating point accuracy, which came with video cards conforming to the DirectX 9 specification. DirectX 9 Shader Model 2.x suggested the support of two precision types, full and partial precision. Full precision support could either be FP32 or FP24 or greater, while partial precision was FP16. ATI's Radeon R300 series of GPUs supported FP24 precision only in the programmable fragment pipeline while NVIDIA SNV300 series supported both FP16 and FP32, other vendors such as S3 Graphics and XGI supported a mixture of formats up to FP24. Shader Model 3.0 altered the specification increasing full precision requirements to a minimum of FP32 support in the fragment pipeline. ATI's Shader Model 3.0 compliant R5XX generation supports just FP32 throughout the pipeline while NVIDIA's NV4X and G7X series continued to support both FP32 full precision and FP16 partial precisions. Although not stipulated by Shader Model 3.0, both ATI and NVIDIA's Shader Model 3.0 GPUs introduced support for blendable FP16 render targets, more easily facilitating the support for high dynamic range rendering. The implementations of floating point on NVIDIA GPUs are mostly IEEE compliant, however, this is not true across all vendors. This has implications for correctness which are considered important to some scientific applications. While 64-bit floating point values are commonly available on CPUs, these are not universally supported on GPUs. Some GPU architectures sacrifice IEEE compliance, while others lack double precision. Efforts have occurred to emulate double precision floating point values on GPUs, however, the speed trade-off negates any benefit to offloading the computing onto the GPU in the first place. Most operations on the GPU operate in a vectorized fashion, one operation can be performed on up to four values at once. For example, 
if one color is to be modulated by another color, the GPU can produce the resulting color in one operation. This functionality is useful in graphics because almost every basic data type is a vector. Examples include vertices, colors, normal vectors, and texture coordinates. Many other applications can put this to good use, and because of their higher performance, vector instructions, termed single instruction, multiple data, have long been available on CPUs. Originally, data was simply passed one way from a central processing unit to a graphics processing unit, then to a display device. However, as time progressed, it became valuable for GPUs to store at first simple, then complex structures of data to be passed back to the CPU that analyzed an image, or a set of scientific data represented as a 2D or 3D format that a video card can understand. Because the GPU has access to every draw operation, it can analyze data in these forms quickly, whereas a CPU must pull every pixel or data element much more slowly, as the speed of access between a CPU and its larger pool of random access memory is slower than GPUs and video cards, which typically contain smaller amounts of more expensive memory that is much faster to access. Transferring the portion of the data set to be actively analyzed to that GPU memory in the form of textures or other easily readable GPU forms results in speed increase. The distinguishing feature of a GPU design is the ability to transfer information bidirectionally back from the GPU to the CPU, generally the data throughput in both directions is ideally high resulting in a multiplier effect on the speed of a specific high-use algorithm. GPU pipelines may improve efficiency on especially large data sets and slash or data containing 2D or 3D imagery. It is used in complex graphics pipelines as well as scientific computing, more so in fields with large data sets like genome mapping or where two- or three-dimensional analysis is useful a euro especially at present biomolecule analysis, protein study, and other complex organic chemistry. Such pipelines can also vastly improve efficiency in image processing and computer vision, among other fields, as well as parallel processing generally. Some very heavily optimized pipelines have yielded speed increases of several hundred times the original CPU-based pipeline on one high-use task. A simple example would be a GPU program that collects data about average lighting values as it renders some view from either a camera or a computer graphics program back to the main program on the CPU, so that the CPU can then make adjustments to the overall screen view. A more advanced example might use edge detection to return both numerical information and a processed image representing outlines to a computer vision program controlling, say, a mobile robot. Because the GPU has fast and local hardware access to every pixel or other picture element in an image, it can analyze and average it or apply a Sobel edge filter or other convolution filter with much greater speed than a CPU, which typically must access slower random access memory copies of the graphic in question. Energy Efficiency GPU is fundamentally a software concept, not a hardware concept, it is a type of algorithm, not a piece of equipment. However, Specialized equipment designs may even further enhance the efficiency of GPU pipelines, which traditionally perform relatively few algorithms on very large amounts of data. Massively parallelized, gigantic data level tasks thus may be parallelized even further via specialized setups such as rack computing which adds a third layer a euro many computing units each using many CPUs to correspond to many GPUs. Some Bitcoin miners used such setups for high-quantity processing. Historically, 
CPUs have used hardware-managed caches but the earlier GPUs only provided software-managed local memories. However, as GPUs are being increasingly used for general-purpose applications, state-of-the-art GPUs are being designed with hardware-managed multi-level caches which have helped the GPUs to move towards mainstream computing. For example, GeForce 200 series GT200 architecture GPUs did not feature an L2 cache, the Fermi GPU has 768 KB last level cache, the Kepler GPU has 1.5 MIB last level cache, the Maxwell GPU has 2 MIB last level cache and the Pascal GPU has 4 MIB last level cache. Stream Processing GPUs have very large register file which allows them to reduce context switching latency. Due to this, register file size is increasing over different GPU generations, e.g., the total register file size on Maxwell and Pascal GPUs are 6 MIB and 14 MIB, respectively. By comparison, the size of register file on CPUs is small typically tens or hundreds of kilobytes. Several research projects have compared the energy efficiency of GPUs with that of CPUs and FPGAs. GPU Programming Concepts Computational Resources Textures as Stream GPUs are designed specifically for graphics and thus are very restrictive in operations and programming. Due to their design, GPUs are only effective for problems that can be solved using stream processing and the hardware can only be used in certain ways. The following discussion referring to vertices, fragments, and textures concerns mainly the legacy model of GPU programming where graphics APIs were used to perform general-purpose computation. With the introduction of the CUDA and OpenCL general-purpose computing APIs, in new GPU codes it is no longer necessary to map the computation to graphics primitives. The stream processing nature of GPUs remains valid regardless of the APIs used. GPUs can only process independent vertices and fragments, but can process many of them in parallel. This is especially effective when the programmer wants to process many vertices or fragments in the same way. In this sense, GPUs are stream processors a Euro processors that can operate in parallel by running one kernel on many records in a stream at once. A stream is simply a set of records that require similar computation. Streams provide data parallelism. Kernels are the functions that are applied to each element in the stream. In the GPUs, vertices and fragments are the elements in streams and vertex and fragment shaders are the kernels to be run on them. For each element we can only read from the input, perform operations on it and write to the output. It is permissible to have multiple inputs and multiple outputs, but never a piece of memory that is both readable and writable. Arithmetic intensity is defined as the number of operations performed per word of memory transferred. It is important for GPU applications to have high arithmetic intensity else the memory access latency will limit computational speedup. Ideal GPU applications have large data sets, high parallelism, and minimal dependency between data elements. There are a variety of computational resources available on the GPU. In fact, a program can substitute a write-only texture for output instead of the frame buffer. This is done either through render-to-texture, render-to-back-buffer copy-to-texture, or the more recent stream out. The most common form for a stream to take in GPU is a 2D grid because this fits naturally with the rendering model built into GPUs. Many computations naturally map into grids, 
matrix algebra, image processing, physically based simulation, and so on. Since textures are used as memory, texture lookups are then used as memory reads. Certain operations can be done automatically by the GPU because of this. Compute kernels can be thought of as the body of loops. For example, a programmer operating on a grid on the CPU might have code that looks like this. On the GPU, the programmer only specifies the body of the loop as the kernel and what data to loop over by invoking geometry processing. In sequential code it is possible to control the flow of the program using if-then-else statements and various forms of loops. Such flow control structures have only recently been added to GPUs. Conditional writes could be performed using a properly crafted series of arithmetic-slash-bit operations, but looping and conditional branching were not possible. Recent GPUs allow branching but usually with a performance penalty. Branching should generally be avoided in inner loops, whether in CPU or GPU code, and various methods, such as static branch resolution, pre-computation, predication, loop splitting, and zcol can be used to achieve branching when hardware support does not exist. The map operation simply applies the given function to every element in the stream. A simple example is multiplying each value in the stream by a constant. The map operation is simple to implement on the GPU. The programmer generates a fragment for each pixel on screen and applies a fragment program to each one. The result stream of the same size is stored in the output buffer. Some computations require calculating a smaller stream from a larger stream. This is called a reduction of the stream. Generally, a reduction can be performed in multiple steps. The results from the prior step are used as the input for the current step and the range over which the operation is applied is reduced until only one stream element remains. Stream filtering is essentially a non-uniform reduction. Filtering involves removing items from the stream based on some criteria. The scan operation, also termed parallel prefix sum, takes in a vector of data elements and an associative binary function plus with an identity element i. If the input is, an exclusive skin produces the output while an inclusive skin produces the output and does not require an identity to exist. While at first glance the operation may seem inherently serial, efficient parallel scan algorithms are possible and have been implemented on graphics processing units. The scan operation has uses in e.g., quicksort and sparse matrix vector multiplication. The scatter operation is most naturally defined on the vertex processor. The vertex processor is able to adjust the position of the vertex, which allows the programmer to control where information is deposited on the grid. Other extensions are also possible, such as controlling how large an area the vertex affects. The fragment processor cannot perform a direct scatter operation because the location of each fragment on the grid is fixed at the time of the fragment's creation and cannot be altered by the programmer. However, a logical scatter operation may sometimes be recast or implemented with another gather step. A scatter implementation would first emit both an output value and an output address. An immediately following gather operation uses address comparisons to see whether the output value maps to the current output slot. In dedicated compute kernels, scatter can be performed by indexed writes. Gather is the reverse of scatter, after scatter reorders elements according to a map, gather can restore the order of the elements according to the map scatter used. In dedicated compute kernels, gather may be performed by indexed reads. 
In other shaders, it is performed with texture lookups. The sort operation transforms an unordered set of elements into an ordered set of elements. The most common implementation on GPUs is using Radix sort for integer and floating point data and coarse grained merge sort and fine grained sorting networks for general comparable data. The search operation allows the programmer to find a given element within the stream, or possibly find neighbors of a specified element. The GPU is not used to speed up the search for an individual element, but instead is used to run multiple searches in parallel. Mostly the search method used is binary search on sorted elements. A variety of data structures can be represented on the GPU. The following are some of the areas where GPUs have been used for general purpose computing. Usage in bioinformatics A euro expected speedups are highly dependent on system configuration. GPU performance compared against multi-core x86 CPU socket. GPU performance benchmarked on GPU supported features and may be a kernel to kernel performance comparison. For details on configuration used, view application website. Speedups as per NVIDIA in house testing or ISV's documentation. A Euro Q equals Quadro GPU, T equals Tesla GPU. NVIDIA recommended GPUs for this application. Check with developer or ISV to obtain certification information. Kernels Flow Control GPU Methods Map Reduce Stream Filtering Scan Scatter Gather Sort Search Data Structures Applications Bioinformatics Molecular Dynamics <laughs>